Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Josh. You could call me Mad Charcoal or um, you could even call me, I don't know, Daddy Charcoal. I'm, I'm a father, technically, actually, for real. I am. So you can, it's not weird. You can call me Daddy Charcoal. This is, um, this is the reference I'm going to be using today, roughly. I'm not going to go with it exactly, but I like the way the face looks, the angle that it's at. And it's black and white, so easier to use. So I'm going to use that one today. You use whatever reference you find. Don't use the same reference. Just switch it up. Just take whatever um, you learned from the video and then try it out. This is a three ply chipboard. I think it's three ply, maybe a little bit more. It's pretty thick and it's gessoed. Well, actually, I just use white spray paint for this for a base. It doesn't have to be exactly beautifully white unless you're very perfectionistic, perfectionist, but um, I just kind of go rough with it and I try to make it look cool. Textured a little bit. Just something that you can paint on rather than just the cardboard itself. Um, it's it, This is gonna be for one of my uh, Paint rag t-shirts I'm going to be shipping out. If you look at my website, madcharcoal.com slash shop, you can buy one of those or buy my art or anything like that. But um, And then they can each come with a sketch. Like um, sometimes they take longer on the sketches, sometimes they're faster, but they're kind of random. What would you get? But they're going to come with this. The shirt's folded over this and shipped out <clears throat> and signed. So it's like an original art piece. This is what I'm going to be working with today. First off, I'm going to have for the base layer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use actually just the black one of these... Um, Oh, being oil pastels. I'm gonna use some masking tape. And we've got golden bone black, which is just the only black that I have left of right now. It's a little bit lighter than a normal black, like an ivory black that I like to use. And we've got titanium, this whole bucket of titanium white. We're not gonna use the entire bucket of paint, I hope. But for my uh, palette, I'm using this other piece of chipboard that got water damaged. As you can see, it's not very straight. So I just use this as a palette now. Um, and then like uh, my very expensive um, artistic paper towel, along with a few brushes. I'll talk about the brushes a little bit as I go, but I have them in this water right here. The smaller brushes, I got a couple fan brushes in there, like a flat, like a, and then a detail brush in there. I forgot the terms of them. Let's get started. Get a good angle here. All right, that's pretty much the middle of it. Move you guys just up slightly. And then we're gonna go backward a little bit so we get more of the angle of what we're working with here. I'll show the reference at the same time, how about that? I know you guys like to see that. You guys are all about references. <laughs> so we'll, we'll work with that. Let's take this uh, piece of oil pastel and start sketching out where we want things to be. I think the eye should be like around there. This part's darker, so I'm gonna scribble in some, I'm just trying to capture some values here and some interesting textures because I'm, most of this is gonna be painted over, but some of it is gonna be, I'm gonna allow it to come through the painting by taping it off. Remember, oil does not mix with water and these are oil pastels. So if you do paint thin without adding too much um, paint in it and having a lot of water in the paint, you're going to end up, it's going to end up pushing the paint, the acrylic paint um, away from this oil, which you don't really want unless you're looking for some weird effect that I don't know about. Or if you're working with like watercolor or something weird like that. <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, I use very um, entry level normal materials. I don't use anything crazy, but it's all about your mindset and the technique you try that matters most and your knowledge in the principles of art and whatnot. <clears throat> so we got a cool base down. I think it's kind of interesting. Kind of where everything I want everything to go. I'm not going to paint the eyes today that all that much because it's more exciting when I focus on a certain part of the face, and today is not going to be the eyes all that much. Let's take that part off. I'm trying to find these like interesting points in the painting that um that I want. I mean, the drawing, or I guess so far it's a drawing uh, that I want to keep in there. These lines where they overlap. Everything that I'm covering with tape. What is that? Six pieces. Let's do seven. Everything that I'm covering with tape is going to be revealed at the end. But I'm not going to ignore it while I paint. But I do want the focal point to be here, so I left that kind of open. Um, the picture plane is mostly, it looks like, well, it was white. So now I'm going to take some black and some white. 
and then mix it in here for this color. This black here, this white here, like this this mid-tone almost. But um but a lot of this is dry paint, so don't get confused with it. Sorry. It's all the same kind of paint that I'm using now though. Alright. Mid-tone here. Kind of squinting while I look at the reference. I'm not too afraid of uh I only have two tones here, so we're gonna lighten up a lot of it, but not losing too much information. I'm not gonna go into the shadows all that much, but I'm trying to make a, like a nice surface where the midtones are um, to work off of. I'm gonna highlight a lot of this area, but there we go. We've got a cool. It's kind of starting to look like a face, right? All these dark areas. I'm gonna come back in with. I'm gonna wash off my brushes a little bit. Threw in the paper towel. Now grab a lot more of this black. Still mix in with that gray a little bit, but now I've got a, a darker tone on my brush. Work the large shapes and then the small shapes, guys. I'm gonna have this one be a bit abstract, a bit expressive, um, but not not super realistic. But it's important to keep those proportions pretty spot on, or as best as you can find them quickly, because that'll be the foundation of how successful your piece is. Even if you have those straight brush marks and um, all of that. Okay. Oh, my wife's back home from doing blood work. Anyway, so um, I'm not worried about the details yet. I'm squinting my eyes trying to find where those values change, those large shapes of values. And the interesting part of the painting looks to be this area here. So we're gonna keep these outer ends, ends um, of the of the painting more loose. And then, oh, someone's ringing my doorbell. And make the focal point here so that, um, so that it's a little more interesting because the human eye naturally wants to move away from, either, first off, the shadows, which in this drawing tend to be, or this painting tend to be the outside edges. And then also more so the middle of the painting and the middle of the face where the actual facial features are distinct, which is, in this case, um, <clears throat> in this case is the, is the, more toward the middle of the, of the painting. So I'm taking, now I'm taking this other brush. It's a little more flat, it's a little rounded at the end. What is it called, like fill, fill I, don't, I don't remember the exact term. Um, I didn't go to art school, I went to design school. But we're gonna take this, lighten it up. It's like a, it still has some of that gray in it, but it's lighter now. I'm gonna block in some of those highlights where they go, mixing it with whatever's on the surface already. Um, I'm not adding too much water to this because I want it to be a lot of pigment. The more water you add, the harder it is to get those, like you get really transparent with the paint, very thin with the paint, and you wanna, um, if you want to start with very thin paint, it's better to start at the beginning and then you work off, work up by adding a little bit more thick paint, like fat over lean, um, if that makes sense. It's a little easier to work with that way, right? Okay. You'll also have like cracking and weird drying if, if you work with, um, thin paints over, uh, over the thicker part of the paint because the thicker part of the paint is not gonna, is gonna dry after, it's gonna take longer to, take longer to dry, but it's underneath, right? And then the top layer is gonna dry faster, which doesn't really make sense, you don't want that. It's a natural for the paint, so work alongside the paint. Let it help you. Don't work against the paint. I like these brush stroke marks that it's given it. You see how like I was kind of sensitive with the light, where the light's hitting? It's not pure white either. There's very rarely pure white or pure black in life. So if you want something to look more like life and have a little bit of a three dimensionality to it or like a little bit of, of a, like a, like a, like a sculptureness to it, like a depth to it, you need to work with all those little midtones in there, right? Those midtones is what brings it alive. The little changes between maybe this highlight to this midtone to this shadow to this um, like uh, cast shadow. Things along those lines is, is what makes your painting come to the next level. 
All right, now that we have the light, I will have the light where I want it. Um, looks like the proportions are pretty spot on. Um, I left the lights kind of out of this. The eyes are kind of out of this. So I'm not worried about those all that much just yet. I'm gonna take this tiny little detail brush. It looks to be, I think the paint's covering the information on it. Thing. The brushes don't matter all that much, but um, I loaded it up with almost pure white, a little bit of gray in it, but we're gonna pop in some highlights there where the where we want the eye to be drawn to, which is the light part of the details of the important parts of the face. Right, so we got lips, a little bit of highlights in the nose. Got a highlight there on the nose, and then a little bit here on the cheek. Just bringing that back up a little. It's mixing with the gray already, which is okay. We want it to blend in nicely, but we don't want to lose completely that, that highlight. We got a little bit here on the the chin. Yeah, I'm not being too picky about following the reference perfectly, but I am using that reference to um, to allow for for more realism in my work. Otherwise, it gets really flat and really boring as if I work just for my mind. Um, but it's a combination this way because I can rely on the light that I see in the reference, but I'm but I'm also being creative with my mind. It's a combination, you know. Most artists you find. Do that unless they do something really abstract or weird. That's not as normal. But now, I think I'm about done. I like it how it's at what it's at now. Um, pretty cool looking painting so far. Let me see. I'm gonna take this glove off. These are nitrite gloves. You don't need them, but I like to use them. Gives my hands a little cleaner. We're gonna peel off this tape. Reveal what's underneath. Not much changed here. I didn't go over that much paint with it. It looks pretty cool. This is gonna be pretty drastic here. Yeah, that's sick. We've got a piece of tape here. All right. Gives it a nice like other layer to it, right? Kind of like they're the underlying bones this, of the sculpt, this like the underlying bones of the painting who needs on top. There you go, that looks pretty sick. I'm pretty happy with that. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out matchruckle.com slash shop if you guys want to buy my art. Um, thanks for taking the time to subscribe and watch this and um, enjoy it. Hopefully, this is something else you guys can experiment with, learn a little bit something from this so you can paint. I'm still learning every single day um, as, as an artist, and <clears throat> I'll share with you guys what I learn and what I try and experimental stuff because this is pretty abstract, but it's fun, right? Um, don't forget to have fun. Don't forget to enjoy it, but also work, work hard to, to get better as an artist, um, no matter what level of art you are. Appreciate all of you guys. You don't need expensive materials to uh, to make good art, but um, but um, yeah, make art no matter what. I'll talk to you guys later. Daddy Charcoal signing off. Yep. <laughs>